Mathematics is full of gimmicky things, and strangely enough, a lot of them are related to animals. For instance, the famous rabbit's problem that Fibonacci formulated to define his sequence. Also the thing I'm pretty sure that every math Olympian knows, simple yet important pigeonhole principle. And even the goose that Per Enflo received as a reward for solving a problem from the Scottish book. But there also is this non-coding exercise that, for some reason, involves ducks. Well, not exactly ducks, duck numbers. Yep, we have duck numbers in mathematics. I was as surprised as you are right now. These are defined as numbers that have at least one zero present in them. For example, 10 is a duck number because zero is the unit digit of 10. On the more basic, beginner-friendly side of coding, there is this exercise to create a function that checks whether a certain natural number is a duck number. In my opinion, it's absurdly basic, below the coding level of any person on the planet Earth, because it can be solved with just one line of code. Simple return true. Yep, that's it. You didn't mishear it. Every number is a duck number. Wait, you don't believe me? But it's obviously true, at least from the mathematics point of view. Well, I know, I know, it doesn't make sense that every number contains a zero, since, for example, 9 doesn't contain any zero. Now you are probably wondering what the hell is wrong with me. But believe me, I have a proof, even a math one. But we need to establish it. You are not expecting me to just hand it to you, right? As we've seen earlier, a natural number is a duck number if and only if it contains a zero. This definition is not very restrictive, but let's roll with it for now. There are plenty of duck numbers laying on the ground just to pick up. 10, 20, essentially any multiple of 10, but also 103 or 2024. But it seems that, for instance, 9 is not a duck number. If you said so, you would be right to some extent. In that case, I would say that you are missing a bigger picture, leading zeros, which are the non-visible zeros that come before any number. Oh yeah, the keyword, any number. It means that all numbers have leading zeros, and thus all numbers are like numbers. Well, I guess that resolves it. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Nah, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't leave you without any proper answer. I know that this approach through ghost leading zeros is totally awful, so let us redefine duck numbers to be numbers that contain a non-leading zero. Better? Now let us try proving that all numbers are duck numbers. Again. Earlier, we stated that all multiples of 10 are duck numbers. Why? Well, it's pretty straightforward. All multiples of 10 are divisible by 10, so they have 0 as their unit digit. Huh, that gives me an idea how to tackle this duck numbers problem. You might be aware of different positional number systems and representing a number in different bases. Like, we generally use the base 10, and that's why we have 10 different digits, and each of the next digit in number represents a different power of 10, and so on. You probably also know the binary system, where the only digits are 0 and 1. To make it more clear, let's see an example. The number 12, which is written in decimal, in binary would be 1100, because it is equal to 1 times 8, plus 1 times 4, plus 0 times 2, plus 0 times 1. In mathematics, we can use any base we want. 2, 3, 4, maybe even 5 if you're brave enough. My point is that maybe, given a natural number n, we can find a base b such that n in base b contains a zero. Doable? Let's find out. There is one obvious answer to that question, which is using base n. You see, n in base n is simply 10, because n is equal to 1 times n plus zero, and thus it contains zero. But still, that is too easy. We want a valid proof that will convince everyone. 
That's why I'm stating this stronger theorem, that for each natural number n there exists a base b greater than 1 and smaller than n, such that n represented in that base contains a zero. Oh, don't forget about our initial goal. This theorem will of course imply that all numbers are duck numbers. Remember, ducks are watching. This theorem needs a little bit of tweaking, because it clearly can't work for 1 or 2 just because of the restrictions we gave for base b, so let us assume that n is greater than 2. Ok, so let's see if the theorem works for n equal to 3. In such a case, we only have one base available, which is 2. And in base 2, 3 is represented as 1, 1. So it still doesn't work. Wow, what a great start. But hey, don't lose hope. Maybe it will work for other numbers. Look at n equals 4. Base 2 works for this number. What about 5 and 6? Base 2 also works. And it breaks once again. 7 doesn't work in this theorem, base 2 or any other base. But after 7, this theorem seems to be working for all numbers. Can we prove it? Well, not exactly. What I mean is that I didn't find the full proof, by myself or in articles or in math stack exchange, but I will show you how close we can get to proving this based duck theorem. To prove this theorem, or at least get closer to proving it, we need to make two observations. First one is that whenever n is a composite number, so it has at least one divisor d that is not 1 or n, then n divided by d leaves zero remainder, and thus the units digit of n in base d is equal to zero. For this theorem, it means that now we can focus only on numbers that are not composite which are prime numbers. Exciting! And kinda scary. The second observation is about the base 2. If you look at binary representations of next numbers, it's fairly easy to notice that almost all of them contain some zero. In fact, the only numbers that do not contain any zero are the ones that consist of ones only. These are very special numbers called Mersenne numbers, which you can recognize as the ones that produce the largest known primes. It's crazy that they pop in the seemingly unrelated based duck theorem. So the conclusion is that our theorem works for all numbers, except Mersenne primes out of all things. Can we go further? Yes, but it gets a bit messy. Let's focus on Mersenne primes. One can easily prove that 2 to the power of k-1 is prime only if k itself is a prime number. Also, each prime larger than 3 falls into one of two categories, 6n plus 1 or 6n plus 5, so we shall concentrate on those two cases. And now the key is base 3. For example, we can prove that for primes of type 2 to the power of 6k plus 1 minus 1, the tens digit in base 3 representation is always 0. It's easily done by considering the remainder this number gives when dividing by 9. But further than that? In similar fashion, we can also exclude other cases, but it seems like these exclusions never complete the proof. I will not go into much detail here. I'll just leave a link to a proper math stack exchange thread and leave it open as it is right now. Since we couldn't prove our base duck theorem, we need to change our approach. Oh yeah, I know now. All numbers are duck numbers because of natural density. In number theory, we are often interested in how common or rare a certain class of numbers is. For example, we intuitively know that only half of natural numbers is even and the other half is odd. But cardinalities don't work here as an explanation because we know that there are infinitely many even numbers and there are infinitely many natural numbers in general. So how can we prove it in a formal mathematical manner? This is where natural or asymptotic density comes in handy. 
It's a simple limit that can be used to explain what fraction of the set of all natural numbers satisfies a certain condition, for example being even or being a duck number. We simply calculate how many numbers below level n satisfy the given condition, take a limit when n goes to infinity, and there we have it. I have a whole video explaining what the concept of natural density is, so I'll slip through the topic and tell you that the natural density of the set of DAC numbers is 1. This means that almost all numbers are DAC numbers. Almost, because sadly that's how densities work. So I guess we didn't prove that all numbers are DAC numbers. If this doesn't satisfy you, I guess it's time to bring out the big guns. Please welcome Zermelo and Frankel. These two folks, roughly a century ago, proposed this finite set of axioms that formulates the set theory. Interestingly, in the Zermelo Frankel set theory, we also construct natural numbers through sets. We start with 0, which is the empty set. Then each next natural number is defined recursively as a set that contains all previous numbers. So 1 is a set that contains 0, 2 is a set that contains 0 and 1, and so on. From this perspective, we can clearly see that every natural number contains a 0 as in set containing another set. Thus, we can conclude without any doubt that every number is a duck number. Voila! On a more serious note, of course not all numbers are duck numbers. Yeah, I know, I know, I fooled you all and you fell for it, but that's not the point. With this video I wanted to show a few things. First of all, every proof you've seen in this video is indeed valid, but only because the definition of duck numbers was imprecise. The true, precise definition wouldn't allow such buffoonery to occur. On the other hand, Hey, just because of those silly considerations, we touched some important and cool stuff in mathematics. For example, this open problem about Mersenne primes, or natural density, and these are Mel Frankel set theory. Questioning is the driving power of mathematics. And remember, sometimes it's great to just have fun, even when doing mathematics. See ya!